Welcome back, folks. Now, before we join Spellbinding SAA artist Sharon Hurst for today's How to Use exercise, I'm going to show you how to do a few simple watercolour techniques to paint a lovely flower, in fact, two flowers. Now, what I've done, I've actually prepared a little bit of a background. I've painted a dark grey with a little bit of alizarin crimson at the back. That was done wet into wet, similar to the way you do a sky. And I put masking fluid on, which is nice and dry, so using the masking fluid removal tool or the finger, just give it a good rub. And we're going to do a couple of light flowers against the background there. Masking fluid um, comes off easy, but don't leave it on a long time because it can actually not come off and you don't want that. So if you get it off within a few hours, then you're going to be ideal. Now, into this, there's two flowers. So the first thing I always notice about painting flowers is that in the center, you see a little bit of a green kind of glow. So using a size six brush and some lemon yellow mixed with some natural blue, you get a nice kind of vivid green, which you quite often see around the center of the flower. So we're going to paint this in like a bit of a ring that goes around, really. And then a nice clean brush. Just wipe it on tissue so you can do a bit of blending. And then drag that color out from the center. So just kind of scribble around the edge. Water again, tissue, and just make sure the whole thing just nicely blends away. Now, while that's having a few seconds to dry, just to mention, if you've got a little square or a chisel brush, this is a little quarter inch one. Any little bits of overlap where the masking fluid didn't quite take, a square brush is quite good for removing those areas and just having a bit of a clean up. It's not going to be perfectly smooth by any means, but it's just quite often a good way to work. There we go. Okay, back to the brush again, and we're going to go for a shadow colour, which I'm going to use the green I just mixed and drop some grey with it. So it's creating a bit of a sort of greeny grey. And this is quite a nice separation colour. So it's natural grey with a little bit of lemon yellow and a little bit of blue, and that'll give you a greeny grey. And the first job is to separate up both of the actual flowers. So I'm going to go in and make sure I follow the shape of this front flower and then work around to the shadow at the back. But I could also creep into that petal as well to create separation there as well. Clean brush, wipe it on tissue again, and then just completely lose that greeny shadow and make it disappear into that actual flower there. So it creates separation. Same time as doing that, I'm also going to blend in this shadow. And that's the theme for the next minute or so. Just separate up each petal with this greeny grey. Now it's looking at which one's underneath. I would say that this one's at the top and that one's underneath. It's on following the shape of the top one as it goes towards the centre. Same for this one. That one goes under there. And that one, I would say, is on the top of this one, so we'll get the shadow in there as well. Clean brush again. Wipe it on tissue. This is adding shadows. Because the grey's in there, it's making a lovely separation of areas. And you can see how that's given quite a nice sort of stacking system for the petals. And this one has got a similar idea, so a couple of shadows just going in there. One down there. Clean brush, tissue. Lose the edges. Make it all disappear away. So you can see there's several petals on each on each flower. The uh, same colour is also very nice for adding little bits of ridges, lines, working from the actual centre a rule. That one comes out from there. And it also starts to give a nice bit of shape. Working them out. There's a really nice shadow that goes underneath this one. I'll put a shadow there. Clean brush, wipe it on tissue. That's giving the impression as though that one's got a bit of a bit of a fold on the end. And of course, if I was to make it a fraction darker, a little bit more grey, just at that point there, 
then that look as though it really goes underneath. So you can see how that one's got a bit of a fold. Now to put the centre in, lemon yellow and alizarin crimson makes a nice orangey colour, which we can pop on. I tend to think it's better just to lightly spot this on, that one as well. So very spotty brush strokes, clean brush tissue again, and then just pull it in to the centre because there's all the little bits of stamens and etc. So that can be quite nicely painted in. And then I tend to think just a bit of a dry brush just to drag out the odd little orange line that comes out from that area. It's amazing what that does, that just turns it into a flower straight away. Lemon yellow and blue is a nice green. Quite a crisp green, just to paint in the uh, stems of the flower. Now I tend to do one side dark. Clean brush over the tissue again. And then just lighten it over and fade the base away. So it's catching a bit of sunlight from somewhere. And a finishing touch, some natural grey by itself, just for the point where it goes really underneath the flower because that shadow will take it under the actual flower. And then back to the orange and just a few little random spots in the center is more than enough to say we've painted a very quick but quite effective little flower picture there, folks. So have a go yourself and remember the most important thing is to have fun and enjoy. Right, it's time to welcome back enchanting professional artist Sharon Hurst as she shows how you can conjure up some spellbinding effects using the magical SAA rake brush. Hello, have you ever come across one of these? This is called a rake brush. And if you look at the top of it, it's cut like a comb. And so you have thick hair here and then fine little brush points of brush here at the top. I'm sure, like me, you've often seen them and wondered, what do I do with that? Let me show you. They're best when you use them with a dry brush technique, to be honest. So take the colour, and when you offer it up to the paper, it will give you this kind of brush stroke. Good for shading little more water, use it wetter, and it will give you this. Look at that. Just think about all the things that you could do with that. So if I were to mix a green using quinacridone gold and a little bit of French ultramarine, and I have myself a nice spring green mix, with this now, Come into the paper and give yourself some little tufts of grass. You can use the side of the brush as well to cut long strokes. Look at that. Come in underneath with a clean brush and a drop of water and just use that stroke to ground your grass. And you have a tuft of grass growing in a meadow. Actually, that looks as though I've got two ears, doesn't it? But imagine now, take a different colour. What should we have here? This is the Payne's Grey. And I'm now going to mix in a little bit of burnt sienna and burnt umber water. And with this, let's have a go at a tree, shall we? Think about cherry trees. So we can score ourselves the edge of the tree, like so. That's our branch. Imagine perhaps for this instance, your light's here. I need to use this brush and use it in the shape of the tree. So with this, we're going to take the shape of the tree and follow it around. There we are. As it moves away from us, we can pronounce the curve a little more. And with this, keep going, you can get some great effects. Let's add a little bit of green 
to make it look as though it's mossy. So here, pull some green through. Up here. We can darken the edges. Go back to your Payne's Grey and really, really put some dark edges in there. Here, look. Straighten it up again. Pull the dark through. Through here. You can cut up into this side as well to offer up some shape on the bark. You can cut areas into it where the tree has obviously lost a branch, perhaps. If we go just into our burnt sienna, through here. And if you keep working at that, you would be amazed at the effects that you can achieve. Layer it, layer it, and layer it. It's best, I think, to allow each coat to dry because then you have a little more control. But that will give you a very respectable tree. Of course, this as well is a good little brush if you like to paint animals, if you like to paint people. I'm thinking here about hair because some people, <laughs> like me, have spiky hair. And so around the top of a head, you could just spike the hair. Hedgehog, if you're painting little animals and cats with fur, you'd want to be just making the edges fluffy. No straight edges, but fluffy edges. It's a wonderful brush. You can do a lot with it. Just experiment and see where you can go with it. But it's worth having in your art box. Give it a try. Thanks, Sharon. Rake's really an essential accessory for any artist's toolbox. Perfect for shading, blending, and adding texture to bring your wildlife and foliage paintings to life. And remember, all products featured on today's program are available from the SAA Home Shop. Visit www.saa.co.uk for details. Right, folks, time for our final break now, but join us in part four when leading SAA artist Jeremy Ford returns to put the final finishing touches to today's Try Your Hand Out Winter Wonderland pastel project. And I'll be dipping into the splashy paint post bag to answer a few more of your artistic questions. We'll see you very soon. Mm -hmm.